Hi modelers, it's Chris here, the modeler at ABR Model Works. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you our new track alignment jig. Now, this is really a long overdue video. I've been going to lay the track for at least two months now, but other little projects just keep sneaking in the back door and getting in the way. Having said that, I'm real keen to get on with the track laying because then I can start putting scenery down and making more buildings. So let's get started. What I have on the bench here is some release paper, which I've mentioned before, and that's gonna go between the jigs and the baseboards. The two short baseboards that I have here are 300 by 600, and they are really my end baseboards for when I'm building layouts. But nevertheless, they still need to have track, etc. Now I already have my track pre-cut to go across the board and the little spaces will locate the track at the right distance in from the end so that I can use 70 mil spaces to join the baseboards together. I'm using some potty filler coloured gap filler. So now the reason why I'm choosing to use this is when it's dry it's still flexible and I'm hoping that that will reduce the noise transmission from the engines and the rolling stock rolling over the rails. So this is a little bit of an experiment. Others have done something fairly similar in the past and they claim that it's going to make a difference. So well, I'm going to give this a try. Okay modelers, so we're going to now start bolting it all together so that we can start to lay the track. Before I get into that, I just want to recap on this material. This is the backing material for the double-sided uh, tape that's used in the framing industry. And they throw out truckloads of this stuff. So basically, you go to a framing shop, you should be able to get it for free. So I've cut now a bunch of these pieces, put a couple of holes in them, so they'll line up with our mounting holes and I'll be clamping this to the face. The most important thing to remember about this paper is that it has a, a more paper-based side and a very waxy side. Um, the object of the exercise here is that this release paper is going to stop any glue that goes down sticking to the baseboard. So the waxy side will go up against the baseboard and the paper side will go up against our jig. If some glue gets on there and does stick to the uh, to the jig, it's not a great problem because you can sand it away. Um, but it is a little waxy anyway, so it probably won't stick. But like I say, the most important face is this face. You don't want any lumps and bumps on that. So then when you bolt the two baseboards together, you won't have a gap that will be produced because you've got a lump. So now what I'll do is I'll bolt the two modules together with the track jig so that you can see what I'm doing as far as the alignment side of things is concerned. Now, as you can see, I've got it bolted together. There's a uh, paper either side of the jigs. Um, the jigs have uh, little slots in them. So if you're doing a longer piece and you want to put a string down there to put a line through, that's designed so that you can do that. You can buy from your hardware store uh, plumb line strings that have chalk on them. So you pull it tight, give it a pull and it'll lay a chalk line down for you. And then you can measure off that. So for example, you know, you might be starting on a longer one in the center and then coming off and joining up at a different uh, distance in from the center. So you can do all sorts of things with the jig. It is designed primarily for layouts that are going to be built to uh, take other people's uh, modules as well. So that's why we have the ability to have the center and then either side of the center a two inch um, space for putting your track. So now what we do next is we have these little alignment plates that drop in like so. We then put the cork road bed down and line it up where you want it to go. Now, because these are uh, laser cut, uh, they do need a little bit of sanding to put a bit of a 45 degree angle on them so that the, the track, uh, or rather, so they'll sit nicely into the track. Okay, so now we've got a, you know, a nice straight run of track that lines up 
perfectly with the center of the baseboard and like I said a moment ago if uh, you wanted to have a double line then you just move this over one space and put a second one in here so you've got your two inch spacing so once I've done that what I'll be looking at next is just to look down through the center just eyeball where you want the underlay to go you can of course sight down through the track and see that it's nice and straight there's also uh, these spacer jigs that will make that track nice and straight for you um, that's a separate item but we'll have those available shortly on the website as well but what I'm going to do next is I want to make sure that I'm going to put the glue where it's going to go and then I'll take a marker or a pen or pencil and I'll just draw a line like so now for the corking glue this gap filler to work the way I'm expecting it to work you'll need to have a thin layer of glue um, a little more so that the cork is not quite in contact with the board itself so it needs to be just sitting on a, you know a very fine thin layer then I'll be putting a little bit of extra corking down the sides so that the cork itself is sort of like wrapped in the uh, corking glue so let's get on with it now as this is the first time I'm doing it I'm uh, going to be guessing a little bit as to how much to put down so I'm just going to start with a small amount because I can always put more on and just sort of see how it spreads okay so probably two beads like that and let's put the cork where it needs to go just lightly press it down because like I said we don't want to squeeze the corking out now get your finger wet and just push it in putting like a fillet along there because it's sitting up a little bit on that corking glue you're pushing it in underneath there we go I think that will suffice for the moment let's get the next piece down so I'm missing a little bit of contact in these corners a little bit but I'll fix that when we pull it all apart I'll be able to carefully work a little bit of extra corking compound into the corner okay so the corking compound has dried nicely and I'm ready now to uh, glue down the track itself um, off camera I have added the feeder wires so that's all done so basically what I'm going to do now is pull them up put some corking compound down and uh, let that dry now I like to solder my feeder wires directly underneath the rail um, that way I can bend them and have the wires themselves be completely invisible I've kept the ties that were in that position so I can trim them back so they're just individual ties and slide them in as you can see that'll sort of cover that up nicely so what I do need to do is just mark where the glue needs to go so that we're not uh, putting it in spots that are going to be problematic afterwards so pretty much very thin pretty much a very thin bead in line with those wires it doesn't take a lot to hold the track down itself let's put the weights there temporarily just to hold it while I get the next piece in place because we've got it joined I did say to not need it to put too much down but part of the reason for doing it this way is to try to remove the uh, sound that gets transmitted so I have changed my mind and I'm just making sure there's a reasonably good coating so it's like sitting on the, the rubbery feel of the, the this material so I'll just pull that back up slide him in place now lift those weights off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down to make sure that it all lines up nicely that's very good so I've now glued the track down built up the road bed so it's got a more natural sort of slope to it I've made up my joiner sections and I've removed the track jig uh, but in the center I've used some more of the release paper and what I've done is I've put two pieces of release paper with the waxy side up against the face of the baseboard and then um, I've just trimmed it back because I want to be able to push the ballast 
uh, up against it and I'll do the same thing when I'm doing scenery I'll put a couple of pieces in and just trim it back a little bit so that you know it's got a nice edge to form so that way when you bolt it together there'll be less noticeable now it doesn't matter for this piece if a little bit of glue goes down and these two pieces stick together I don't care uh, at the end of the day what I want is a nice joint that looks more natural so what's next well I'm going to remove these center pieces and I'm going to start laying the ballast and the shoulder for the road bed I've got to be very careful that I don't put any ballast or glue otherwise it's going to make it too hard to drop those so I've got four different types of material that I'm using for this for the ballast in fact they're all the same material um, what I've done is I've sifted them into different grades so fine medium and coarse and a medium of the natural color of the stone this is just some stone that i bought in a bag from the local hardware store the gray versions um, i've just um, colored them using some acrylic paint to uh, give me a, a same texture but a different look so the gray is going to be used as the ballast and there'll be a little bit of the gray of the coarse down the sides and mixed in with the natural color and so that will build up the shoulder yeah, so first of all i'm just going to be applying it with a spoon getting a brush getting it away from any spots that i don't want it and then with an eyedropper i'll uh, have a mixture of um, white glue modge podge and um, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to make it uh, um, dry quickly okay so i'm just going to apply it dry using a spoon and then a couple of paint brushes to remove any ballast from areas that i don't want it and i'm going to start by going down the center of the track with the medium ballast Okay, so this is now what I'm looking for. Now this is pre-glued, it's just loose, sitting down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but I'm going to talk my way through it so that you can see what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about. Now these two baseboards are joined together with two pieces of the release paper, but the waxy side is against the baseboard face. Um, I've also got uh, one of the track alignment jigs bolted up with a piece of release paper there as well idea is that of course it will just come apart nicely so now this forms a dam wall so that the glue won't go down too far now i am using diluted glue so i expect some to go down there and they may need to be a little bit of clean up on the face so let's get started so first up i'm going to sprinkle some of my medium ballast down the center and then brush it out not worry too much about it uh, cleaning the tops of the sleepers at this stage I'll be doing that with my finger shortly because I think that's faster and gives you a cleaner finish right now all I'm wanting to do is just get the uh, stone in place making sure we get a little bit at the top on the shoulder so now by sighting down the track you can make sure that the profile of the bellows is the same all the way along it doesn't have to be exact because the unless you're modeling the absolute modern era where they're using the equipment that does do virtually a perfect job so it's all to do with what looks right for the time that you're modeling that's what i'm trying to say now i look down that i need a bit more on this side and a little bit less on this side so sweep a bit away and then pat it back down so a little bit of patience we'll get the job done and we just want just a little bit of fine stone not too much when you push your finger down it just to uh, fill in the gap now of course the ballast and the color of the soil that you're putting down should be a reflection of the area that you're modeling now this edge doesn't really matter too much because it's a transition between the uh, ballast and whatever the the uh, scenery is going to be so i'm not overly fussed about that at this stage just keep working it until you get the look that you're looking for and also remember things like scale you know the the rock that you're using for your ballot needs to match the scale that you're working with quite often some of the commercial material that's available just isn't to scale 
Now if there's any spots that you haven't quite filled in, um, once it's down and dry you can come back to it and be a little bit more critical. But like I said before the most important thing right now is these little spots here where the rail is going to go. Make sure that you've got that well and truly cleaned out of any excess material. And picking away stone off the sleepers afterwards to tidy it up is a bit of a pain so try and get that as clean as you can at this stage and also the inside edges of the rail. Now with a little bit of fine ballast just break the edge up with the transition between the two different soil and I find this is best applied just with your fingers. It softens the edge. The ballast won't be in a completely straight line. Okay so I think that's ready now to be glued. So I'm spraying on a mixture of water, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and some dishwashing detergent just to give the uh, glue a chance to sort of soak right in so I think that will do the job. I've got some Modge Podge which I've mixed with some water about 50-50. There's also a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in there so it's a nice runny mix. It should just soak in like so. Now there's plenty of videos out on doing this so I'm not going to bore you too much with a blow by blow but there will be a few people that are new to the hobby and maybe looking at uh, ballasting for the first time. So basically what you're doing is just pouring it on and letting it soak in. And as you can see it's just getting right into that stone and ballast. Now this of course is the main reason why we prep the baseboards and give them a good coat of, of uh, paint so that when you do little jobs like this where there's lots of water it will not uh, spoil the timber. I'll let that now dry overnight. I'll get a towel in a minute just sort of soak up a little bit of the excess that's run off. So now the glue is dried to the point that I can separate the two pieces and you want to do that as soon as possible because the capillary action um, will force glue down on the inside and so it will get on the, uh, the face. So while it's still quite wet and fresh you can use a damp cloth to uh, to remove any excess glue and any ballast that happens to sort of find its way down there. So as you can see that's still got quite a bit of wetness about the uh, the glue that has come down the face. So that's the main reason. Now I'll leave this for 24 hours or so to let all of the glue completely dry. You can see there's a few little white spots that's probably where the glue wasn't quite mixed as well and so there's a little bit more glue to, uh, to water ratio in those areas so it take a little bit longer for that to, uh, to set up nicely. But that's it. Um, I have joined it uh, previously. Uh, everything lines up nicely so I don't expect to have any problems with this at all. So what's next? Well, I've, uh, in the past videos I've shown you the rest of the baseboard, the, what's going to be my first diorama and that's what's next. We're going to uh, start laying the track and everything for that and although I won't video the entire process because it's exactly the same as what I'm doing here, things like mounting of the points and, and wiring and all those will do videos on all those things. So that way you can see how I go about it at least. Okay, so that's it. So now please help us out by subscribing to the video. Also, if you like the content, click on the like button. In the meantime, have fun modeling. I'm Chris, the modeler at ABR Model Works. <laughs>